Good evening everyone, welcome to the Elite Encounters update for the 3rd of August 2015. Um, hope you've had a good week. Um, without any further ado we'll head straight into the update. There's quite a lot in it that might drag on so I'm not going to waste any time with this preamble nonsense today. So um, you, should have all of, you should all have got your uh, your agenda this week again so hopefully you've had a read through that and you should be familiar with what's going to be said in this part of it. So I'll just leave it on the screen for a second and I'll carry straight through. Okay, the progress report for this week. Um, writing, uh, considering how... Writing has been primarily trying to consider how the feedback from Sam's group, as I discussed last week, should be put into the rules. Um, the revisions to the structure of the vehicle ship content and where in the book it's allocated. Those both cover um, a lot of the... sort of the main thing, really. Um, Sam's group and their information about how character generation should be done and so on um, will require a few little rewrites which I haven't actually done yet I am still thinking about how to put those in there and how to restructure it so that it makes sense and doesn't mix up things too much um, the revision to structure of the vehicle and ship combat uh, vehicle ship content um, involves quite a bit of a rewrite to the vehicle information. A lot of it's going to be split out. I'll go into that in more detail in a bit. This is really just a summary of what's going to go in in more detail later on, basically. <coughs> um, just one sec. Type something into the chat thing. Um, so yeah, the revisions um, are going to be split across the system section. I'm going to move the some of the content into the main system and leave some of the content in the separate miniature room section. So hopefully that should be uh, fairly well structured. The other thing I've been doing this week has been the artwork. Um, trying to look at how to represent the ship data for the narrative purposes um, and actually try and see if there's a split between um, how the narrative based stuff will work and how the miniature rules will work. Again, I'll go into that in more detail in a second. Um, oh, and I haven't said hello to those of you in the chat. Thanks for joining us live. Um, as I said, this will be put on YouTube at some point in the future, probably later on tonight. Okay, so vehicle rules has been the main, uh, again, has been the main uh, focus on the on the thing. Um, the week has been spent with a lot of thought, a lot of thinking has to be done about how this is going to work because the way I was doing it before just wasn't working. So they see their um, head scratching was the main thing. Um, that I've done this week um, and yeah I came to a bit of an epiphany at some point when I looked at the way things were going and I thought to myself right okay why am I having so much trouble getting this bit working right am I trying to put too much into the same thing I'm trying to, trying to concentrate too much on certain aspects that aren't going to work um, so I took a step back from it um, and did a bit of research which meant basically going to the other systems that I have um, in my possession things like Traveller, the Star Wars RPG uh, the Star Trek RPG, various different things that have a ship combat element to them and see how they handled them um, to try and avoid some of the mistakes that uh, hopefully beginner RPG writers, which is what I am after all, have encountered, no pun intended. Um, so I had a look through some other books, uh, I had a look through some other systems, some other games, even some board games just having to look see how things were done. Um, and yeah, um, Essentially, by trying to merge the narrative rules and the miniatures rules into one cohesive group was pretty much a big mistake uh, because the narrative has a whole separate focus. Obviously, the focus for the narrative is on the player uh, and how the player is going to handle that combat system, how the player is going to handle that combat situation, sorry, not the system. Um, and most of the stuff that the miniatures rules have been focused on, things like movement rates, manoeuvre rates, turn circles, that sort of stuff, aren't really that important when it comes to the narrative side of things. All you really need to do is have an idea how much points damage you can cause and how much points the, of damage the ship can take. The rest of it is kind of wishy-washy, if you like, because there's no fit state to say, right, well, there's no point in saying that your ship's got a manoeuvrability of five when you're, think, when you're doing it in narrative. That doesn't mean anything. And it was one of those things that when I found that and I looked at that and I sort of thought to myself, well, why didn't I work that out before? You know, that's fairly bloody obvious. But 
it's just one of those things where you can't see the forest of the trees really um so essentially that's that's where i got to at that point so a bit of a reimagining was uh, embarked upon um, where the narrative rules are now going to be separated out completely from the miniatures rules there will be hooks into them um, but not the way that it was done before whereas the same stats that are used in the narrative rules are used for the miniatures rules there would be a little bit more expansiveness in there um, so that there would be a bit of a schism between the narrative rules and the miniatures rules so as I said the narrative rules are getting moved to the main system section um, and once that has been done, well it isn't really that big a job because essentially all I need to do is just move the, the rules that I've written so far once I've been, since I've been working on this stuff for the last few weeks is move that stuff from one file to another file essentially and that's moved it from one place to the next um, and so then create a way to represent the main stats for narrative uh, combat or narrative uh, scenarios that can be expanded on so as I say putting hooks into the into the narrative situation and then moving it from there now most of my work this week hasn't been on a computer I have actually sat making notes on notepads and notepaper I apologize for the quality of these pictures they were done on a, on a mobile phone at, uh, during the day yesterday when I was trying to sort of collate what I was putting together for this update um, you know, so I'm not going to spend far too much time messing about in a graphics package when I've got work to do so there you go so rather than taking them as, as a combined whole like looking at the ships as a separate entity a vehicle type is something that was one of the hooks that could go from the narrative side of things into into the other part of it into the into the miniature rule side of things um, so there will be an indicator on those on, on, on the ship stat uh, cards which you'll see in a second um, which will denote what type of vehicle it is whether it's a wheeled uh, ground vehicle, it's an aircraft, spacecraft, watercraft, hovercraft, blah de, blah de, blah indeed whether it's a person so uh, some little icons will be drawn up to uh, specify that on the on the character sheets not the character sheets, the vehicle sheets so will that provide modifications to task pools or difficulties? that's one of the questions I'm asking myself at the moment would uh, the type should in some aspect because obviously some vehicles can move faster than others and have better maneuverability than others or could be just be well uh, slightly outside that is being bigger than being bigger than them so so that's the next thing to look at as far as the narrative side and the miniature side of things is concerned is the dif differences between the different vehicle types in terms of maneuverability and if there are any modifications vehicle categories themselves not entirely sure within each type of vehicle, wheeled aircraft or anything like that, whether there's going to be categories that are going to go across each other, there's going to be separate things. Um, obviously, some of the categories that I've been listening on the screen, the fighter and cruiser, etc., fighter can be a class that could go along different things. So, you could have an aircraft fighter, you could have a, a spacecraft fighter, you could even have a hovercraft fighter if you really wanted one. Um, so, th there could be some crossover between those two different types of things. Now I'm not entirely sure whether the categories thing is going to get pushed forward any more than it was. Um, it may be that I, I'll leave that to one side and just use uh, the the ships themselves or the size of the ship or or something like that or the size of the vehicle, for example. So as part of that, in the in the on the screen there, is different ways of con conceptualizing the ship size. Now one thing I did do earlier in the development was I had a ship size start on this on the ship sheets. Um, and I got rid of that in favour of manoeuvrability and movement and I'm thinking it may be actually a better idea for the narrative side of things to bring the ship size back so all that would really cause is a bit of a what it would really cause, that's not a good way of putting it all that would be result from that is it, there would be a, a modifier or a, a an additional task uh, pull dice depending on how big your size is in relation to the other ship or how big your vehicle is in, in aspect to the other ship the other vehicle. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking too fast. It's my problem. Brain's not able to catch up with what I'm trying to say. So I've all got a lot to go through. So, so yes, resurrecting the concept of ship size for narrative combat is uh, one of the ways that I think a rather fuzzy um, stat can be used as narrative and will provide dice modifiers rather than actually being specifically assigned to a particular ship or vehicle size. 
um, and size as it says there probably would not be used in the miniature side of things uh, the size is really when you're looking at counters on a table the size isn't really particularly relevant to the combat which is one of the reasons why I discarded it in the first place um, so I think there'd, there'd be a bit of a, a swap over when you're in miniature rules you'll be having the move the movement and maneuverability stats will be used for stuff there so there you go um yeah as I said, as I was going through this and as I was going through a lot of the stuff that was in the card in the uh, bits of paper I did realize that the veteran cruiser terminology was a bit open so I did decide to get rid of that and then swap it out for hull mass so the hull, the size criteria rather than being based on whether something's a fighter or a cruiser um is be going to be based on hull mass now what I've got on the page there is my trying to work out the kind of way that that can work um so the majority of the things in the game the vehicle vehicles and ships both in the computer game and in the role playing game would fall within the categories that are there now obviously that's going to need some tweaking that's in a very early sort of revisiting stage of that at the moment so um th which brings us to the sort of little in progress diagram at the bottom of that sheet there which is the card concept now i've not included the the picture that I included in two separate updates uh, during the last couple of months uh, which was the sample cards they pretty sure they're going to be used um, within the system now because they provide a very very simple method of storing the basic information for narrative uh, situations with vehicles so that will provide the basis for what will can then be carried over as I said the hooks that game and then be carried over into the into the main miniature rules and the vehicle record file the way I've got it in my head at the moment I've not actually done any graphics for this yet but last night I was working on a bit of a a modification to the vehicle record file where there'll be a specific place on that file to put these cards and then integrate those stats into the rest of the um, stats for the miniatures rules and so on so that seems pretty pretty good to me it makes me a lot happier to look at it that way and it is sorry excuse the noise I'm just tucking a cable behind my ear um, it makes me it's given me a much more open view of what's going to happen in the future as far as the game so I'm hoping it's going to go quite well from that point um, I'm finding it much easier to envisage where it's going to go from that point on so there we go okay um, so that's it work on the way I've changed this to do list slightly and removed the the cutouts st the stuff that's been done uh, but to do now is to add the narrative based vehicle and counter drills to the section to the uh, to the main system section which is pretty much done all you need to do is copy another couple of paragraphs over and then just do a bit of a rewrite and get the uh, main part of it through get the blah, 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 narrative side of the stats done um, separate the miniatures rules out in separate section which is pretty it's already in uh, it's already in the, the right place I just need to put the hooks in to tie it together into the narrative side and then of course play test okay feedback and questions None. If anybody in chat has any questions, then by all means, post something in the chat, and I'll I'll certainly answer it for you, as long as it's decent. Um, but I've not had anything through the week, uh, comments-wise, so nothing really to discuss here at this point. So, um, all that's really left to say at that point then is to go and to remind you again that I'm doing a 24-hour charity stream. Da -da -da -da. Um, yeah, I know you're tired of hearing about it. I don't care because I'm going to keep mentioning it every week until such time as it gets to the 24 hour stream. Uh, so it's on 12th to 13th September, which is a Saturday to a Sunday, midday to midday UK time. Um, the stuff I'll be doing, I've now had confirmation that we've got some giveaways to do. Uh, we've got some cool stuff from Fantastic Books, some cool stuff on the way through the post, apparently, from Frontier Developments to give away. Um, and community shenanigans are looking like they're going to be quite good. There's quite a few people going to contribute to stuff. So uh, much, much thanks to them for everything they're contributing, everything they're suggesting, and for their support in this as well. And all of you guys out there as well for reading this stuff, listening to this stuff, and hopefully popping on the stream at some point and watching. It'll be on twitch.tv slash which you're watching now. And if you want more information about any of the stuff that I'm doing, including the great Dave Shave, which will be uh, fantastic on in October, then there are now dedicated pages on daftworks.co.uk to let you know what's going on. And that, I believe, is about it. The next update will be next Monday, 10th of August, 8pm UK time, as usual. Start with a regular stream. If you've got any comments or anything you want to 
uh, feature on the stream on this update stream at that point uh, then send it to buy next Monday at 6 p.m. all my links on the bottom there are there for your perusal feel free to get in touch for any reason I'm always here night or day um, and that's it thanks for watching again take care and we'll see you again next week okay it's trying to find the right button good night oh sorry I'll be coming back on for those of you who are a bit confused by this I'll be coming back on in about five minutes or so with the Monday night gaming stream where I'll be in Elite Dangerous again so if you want to hang around hang around I'll be popping back on soon bye